In this video I'm going to talk about making type into outlines in Illustrator and in design. So you may want to do this if you're working with logos or you want to distort the type. So making type outlines essentially means that you no longer have live type. Live type is when you can still highlight it and you can go in and kern and change the typeface and all of that kind of thing. As soon as you make it outline, so it becomes a shape and you can't edit it that way anymore. So I always recommend um, holding your option key and dragging a copy off to the side. So this way, if, it come, if you come back and have to change this for a spelling error or something else that you can't change while it's outlines, you have what you started with and you can just go from there. So I'm in Illustrator at this point. And Illustrator is super friendly with making type and outlines because it is a vector editing program and fonts are more or less vector creating software. So I've got my uh, type here and I'm going to highlight the whole object. So I am not selecting the type and highlighting it. I am using my selection tool, the black arrow. So I'm just selecting the object and then I'm going to the type menu and down to create outlines. It's also shift command O in both Illustrator and InDesign for a keyboard shortcut. So once I create outlines, I can click off of that and when I click back on it still moves as a group, but I can't double click in here, I can't highlight, it's no longer live type, it's a shape. So I have this box up here so you can see that it still retains all the counters as holes, um, but now they're compound path. So a compound path is any, any shape that's cut out of another shape, um, so it retains those. So in Illustrator, the quick way to get these apart is you just have to ungroup them. So that's object ungroup or shift command G. So if I click off of them, uh, and then when I click back on, all the letters are separate. I've got all my counters. There's still compound paths. Everything is lovely. So these are all now fully editable. I can switch to the direct selection tool or the white arrow. The quick way to get there is to hit the A key. And you can see all of the points. So I could for example, I'm going to click off that and just grab just this point and pull it down. I could play with the handles and I could make it start to look like the sea is melting. Uh, so type in Illustrator that's made outlines is going to be a lot more cooperative if you want to use some of your effects. So especially if you want to get into the uh, any of the warp options. I guess it's going to be a little bit more predictable um, if it's shapes and not outlines. So you should always make logos in Illustrator and you definitely want to make sure before you uh, or as you create the final versions that you're making the type into outlines because that means anybody who opens it and doesn't have the font you use is just going to get errors and it won't look right. It'll just swap in the default font which is the super boring Myriad Pro um, and it's, it's going to ruin your logo design if you don't make it outlines. So that is Illustrator. I'm going to flip to InDesign. So InDesign, of course, is a little bit more complicated because InDesign is a layout program, not a graphics creation and editing program. So I've got my live type here. I can select it, highlight it, all that good stuff. So I'm going to go to my selection uh, tool again, the black arrow, so at this point kind of the same deal. I'm going to option drag a copy off to the side and I'm in preview mode so if I go out of that, I'm, so I'm pressing the W key to hide and show uh, the sides. So here's my copy for later and in here I'm, I'm going to do type create outlines Again, shift commando. So it all looks the same, right? But you can't ungroup it. 
So this is where InDesign uh, is no longer as cooperative. So you have to do a little bit of extra legwork to get these letters apart if that's what you need to do. If you just need to make them outline so they're not live type anymore, you're done. You're golden. So uh, if you do need to get them apart, you need to go under Paths and ask it to release the compound path. So again, compound paths in, in this case are the A and the D. So those are uh, shapes cut out of shapes. So when I do that, those counters fill in. But everything is separate now. All I have to do is I'm just going to drag and hit both of these. I'm going to make sure first, though, that this is on top. So that's on top. And then I can go, I have a couple options. I can use my Pathfinder and use this minus front option. So there's my D back and it is, I'll put that on top. That is indeed a compound path with the whole cutout. Um, so I noticed with the A when I did this before that for some reason the counter shape is underneath. So in InDesign, if you're trying to get it at a shape underneath and you don't want to move it, so I don't want to move the rest of this A because I want it to line up perfectly, right? So I know, ex I know where it is, so I'm going to hold the Command key and just click one more time. And that selects the object underneath it. So this will keep going. If you had a stack of five objects and you clicked on the first one and then Command click, Command click, it'll select the third one down. So I'm going, I could do Shift Command and then the right bracket to put this on front, or I could right or Control click or go to the Object menu and go to Arrange, and I want to bring that to the front so that the counter path is on top of the rest of the letter. So there, I've got it now. Uh, I'll make it another color so you can see it better, because it doesn't matter what color it is. I'm going to select both. As long as the shape you're cutting out is on top. So I could do Pathfinder and Minus Front. I could also do Object Paths Make Compound Path. Oh, and that was uncooperative. So let's stick with the Pathfinder. Uh, compound paths I covered in a different demo. And InDesign has definitely been having some uh, growing pains as of late when it comes to uh, path handling. So if you've ever tried to paste a path from Illustrator to InDesign or the other way around, it now kind of comes in sort of as an odd kind of group. Um, so I'm not exactly sure why that is, but it's definitely affecting a lot of things. So now using the minus front pathfinder, and if you don't have your pathfinder window, you can go to in InDesign, the window menu, and it's hiding under object and layout. Um, in Illustrator, it's just right there under the window menu, it just says pathfinder. So that's how you uh, grab that window there. So just a quick review, because I've been talking about compound paths. Um, it's been a while since you did one of those. I can have any two shapes. I'm just going to show you why it's annoying that that doesn't work on the letters. So if I have any two shapes here, and this is the, I want to cut a circle in this big rectangle. So I have the circle on top, because that's the hole I'm going to cut. I select both. Object. Paths, make compound path, and now you can see I've got the A is on top there, but I've got a hole in that rectangle, so that's what uh, used to work well in Illustrator. If you have an older version of Illustrator, I think even in CS6 um, that behaved with letters. So that is how you uh, work with creating outlines for type in InDesign and Illustrator.